will be done. If it is any cash, is anybody like that here? You are any Benny? Let me hear you say it loud and clear. <laughs> that every one of you from now on you will begin to excel amen who is the one fellow that you will stand beside him or her say you are the one who will get my attention allows you to enter into overflowing blessings. Redemption Way.
ancient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are. of days as old as you are as old as you are you will never fail ancient of days ancient of days as old as you are as old Unchangeable changer. The one who is, the one who was, the one who is to come. The Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the ending. Glory be to your holy name. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. There's no one like you. The Rock of Ages. The Holy One of Israel. The lion of the tribe of Judah. The one who speaks and it is done. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you for what you did yesterday. Thank you for the harvest of souls. Thank you for speaking to our future. Thank you because we know that tomorrow will be all right. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Tonight in all our lives, Father, perform your wonders. Do something special. Glorify your holy name. And at the end of it all, take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let someone shout hallelujah. Isaiah 55, verse 10 to 11. Isaiah 55, 10 to 11. Even as we consider the signs and wonders of the spoken word, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But he shall accomplish that which I please, and he shall prosper in the thing whitherto I sent it. That's the Almighty God speaking. And he's speaking to someone here tonight. He's saying your tomorrow will be all right. If you are the one, I think I better hear your amen. Whenever you hear us praising God and calling Him 
older than the oldest. We're actually referring to one of his titles, the word. Of all the things that God could call himself, he loved the word so much that he calls himself the word. He says in John chapter 1 verse 1, John 1 verse 1, he says, In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. So he is older than the oldest. This word also created all things. According to John chapter 1 verse 3, John 1 verse 3 he says, By him were all things created. And there's nothing that was created that was not created by him. Now because the word created all things, that is why it can transform all things. Which is good news for you because it's about to transform your life. It can transform darkness to light. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. Genesis 1 verse 1 to 3, he says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And then the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. And suddenly there was light. And in the name that's above every other name, today, in your life, there will be light. That's why when in Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52, Mark 10, verse 46 to 52, when Bartimaeus cried out to Jesus, for mercy and Jesus sent for him and he came and he said what do you want he said I want to regain my sight all Jesus did was he spoke receive your sight and immediately he received his sight and according to the hymn of this Congress in the mighty name of Jesus Christ all of you with eye problems, you will get your miracle. The world can transform darkness to light, and it can transform emptiness to fullness. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 20 to 22, Genesis 1, 20 to 22, the Bible tells us that God spoke. When he created the earth, it was empty. But when he spoke, waters bring forth, land bring forth, sky bring forth. Suddenly, there was abundance of fish, abundance of birds, abundance of animals. So, this same word, is coming out to somebody today who is here empty. Before this Congress is over, you begin to know what is called the overflow. That's why when God wanted to do the impossible for Sarah, all he said is, Sarah shall have a son. And the womb that had been empty for 90 years suddenly began to know that there is somebody new inside. And now I'm saying to all of you who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, in the name that's above every other name, this month, your womb will receive a visitor of joy. This word can bring order out of confusion. 
it can transform confusion to order. He said, when the world was created, it was without form. It was confused until God spoke. And when you read Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41, Mark 4, 35 to 41, the Bible tells us that when there was a storm, and Jesus was sleeping, and the disciples woke him up, all he said to the storm was, Peace be still. And immediately, out of the confusion, order came. And now I'm saying tonight that all of you who might be in any form of confusion, before this night is over, peace will come in Jesus' name. The word is extremely powerful. It is powerful because it has its origin in God. However, we discover that the world does not begin to walk until it is spoken. Until God said, let there be light. There was no light. The word has to be spoken before it becomes effective. However, we also know that the moment the word is spoken, it can no longer be restrained, it can no longer be called back until it has finished its job. God said, the word that is gone out of my mouth shall not return to me void. The words that had already gone to you tonight, to which you had already said amen, is already at work. And it's not going to stop until the work is finished. Whether the word is spoken to heal or to deliver, Psalm 107 verse 20, Psalm 107 verse 20 says he sent his word and it healed them and delivered them out of all their destructions. The, the moment the word is gone out, there's no stopping it. It will just keep on walking, keep on walking. Even if it is spoken to the dead, it can penetrate through into the bowels of the earth and bring the dead out. Like we found in John 11, verse 39 to 44. John 11, 39 to 44. Jesus spoke a word. Lazarus, come forth. And the word went straight into the grave. Grab the fellow for whom the word was sent and brought life back to him and the one who had been dead for four days came back to life. I speak to every dead womb here tonight. I speak to every dead eyes. I speak to, I speak to every dead marriage. I speak to every dead business. In the name that's above every other name, come back to life. You're watching Redemption Way. There is a redeemed Christian Church of God very close to you. Join them for a life-changing experience in worship.
Kitchen, Redemption Way. So when you read Matthew chapter 8, thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, there's someone here tonight, he said, there was a time when you were completely down and he brought you out. He asked me to tell you, he will do it again. So when you read Matthew chapter 8, verse 5 to 13, you understand what that centurion was talking about. When he said, all you need to do is speak the word only. Just send the word. I think somebody should lift his hand to the Almighty God and say, Lord, send the word to me tonight. Just send the word to me tonight. Just send the word to me tonight. Now, so we see that when the word has come out of the mouth of God, <laughs> it continues to perform wonders until it has finished the assignment. But the greater wonder is that just as the world will perform wonders in the mouth of God, it will also perform wonders in the mouth of his prophet. Some of us have never heard God audibly. I pray that God will open your ears. But many times he will send a word to you through his prophet. For example, if you read 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7, the Bible tells us about a widow with two sons who was destitute, and the creditors have come to take his sons into bondage if he if she couldn't pay within 24 hours she ran to a man of god if you read that story very carefully you will notice something interesting the man of god said go and borrow empty vessels borrow not a few when you've done that shut the door upon yourself take the bottle of oil you say you have and begin to pour out and begin to set aside that which is full now the man of God didn't say, I prophesy that as you are pouring the water it will be multiplied. No, 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 he just said this, just go and do what I said. And because the man of God said, set aside that which is full, immediately the power in the world has gone into that bottle of oil. So that when the widow began to pour, the empty vessels began to fill. Today I stand on the authority of the word of God. I stand before you as his servant. I stand before you as his prophet. To say that from now on, everything that is empty in your life shall become full. A young man came to us several years ago. He's no longer so young. And he was distressed because he had become financially bankrupt. No money at all. He came for prayers on this camera in the early days. After I finished praying for him, he said, I know I'm not supposed to come to a, a prophet empty-handed, but I have nothing. And so, prophet, <laughs> it is you who will give me the money for transport back home. <laughs> and I took the little money I had then, and uh, I was very rich in those days, but uh, you know when two, two poor people meet, 
one is still richer than the other. So I took the little money I had and I gave it to him and I said, this money will never finish. He took it and said, Amen. Today, by the special grace of God, because I know him, I don't know how many houses he has built, but I know at least two. One in his hometown and one in the camp here. And so I'm prophesying to someone here too. Whatever money is in your pocket now, we never finish. The word of God spoken through the mouth of his prophet is as powerful as if it came through the mouth of God itself. In 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8 to 17, 2 Kings 4, verse 8 to 17, it tells us the story of how a woman had taken care of Elisha, and Elisha decided to reward her. This woman has been feeding me, has built a house for me. Let's say, let's reward her. I said to the woman, woman, nine months from now, you will have a son. And the woman said, man of God, don't deceive me. And this is a, that's a clear way of saying, I don't have faith for a child now. But the man of God has spoken. If you read the story very well, Elisha didn't even repeat himself. Elisha didn't say whether you believe or not, I've spoken. Once he spoke once, he just kept his mouth shut. Nine months later, the baby came. Some of you will remember the testimony of a couple. They've been barren for years. And they came to us for prayers. And uh, Instead of praying, I just asked them, under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, of course, I said, what kind of baby do you want, boy or girl? The husband said, boy. The wife said, girl. And they said it simultaneously. So I said, in that case, let's have a twin. One boy and one girl. I'm sure you remember their testimony. Well, maybe I should ask those of you who are here trusting God for the fruit of the womb. How do you want your twins? So shall it be in Jesus' name. Whether to control the weather or spoken in judgment, the word of God coming from the mouth of the prophet of God is as powerful as if it is coming from the mouth of God himself. But probably the greatest of all wonders of the spoken word is that in your own mouth that word spoken can have the same effect. In other words, you can be your own prophet. I, I was sharing with some of my children not too long ago. And I said, I don't get people prophesying to me. So I prophesied to myself. Early in the morning, I stand before my mirror. And if you are standing before the mirror, who do you see? Uh -huh. So I point at the fellow in the mirror. Hello, it's going to be well with you today. How many of you believe that your tomorrow will be all right? You better say it with your mouth and say my tomorrow will be all right.
Why? Because God said in Numbers chapter 14, verse 28. Ah, I want to say amen to this one before I tell you. God said, there's someone here today. He said, I should tell you, I control time and seasons. And I am going to put an end to your dry season permanently. Numbers 14, 28, God said, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. That's why you have to watch your mouth. Because as we are speaking, God is listening. God is hearing. As you have spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. Say it one more time, my tomorrow will be all right. Remember what David said in 1 Samuel 17, verse 45 to 51. 1 Samuel 17, 45 to 51. He said to Goliath, he said, I'm not going to just kill you. I'm going to cut off your head. Do you know at the time he was speaking, there were no, he had no sword in his hand. Kill, yes. He was going to use the sling and the stone. They cut off the hair. He had no provision for that at all. But because he said it, the provision was available. Say it one more time. My tomorrow will be all right. Again, you know the story of the Shunammite woman in, in 2 Kings chapter 4, 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 18 to the end, when she lost that miracle boy. And the husband asked her, Where, why are you going to see the prophet today? It's not, it's not the time to go and pay your tithe. It's not the mountain. Where are you going? She said, all will be where? Well. When she came to the man of God, the man of God said, uh, go and ask the woman, what's the problem? She said, no, no problem. All is well. Hmm. Turn to the fellow next to you and say, look at me very well. Because all is well with me. You better say it as if you mean it now. In Luke chapter 1, verse 34 to 38, Luke 1, verse 34 to 38. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I know today will be better than yesterday. The Lord said, there's someone here tonight. He said, I know you are believing me for the impossible. He said, I will not disappoint you. Job 22, from verse 21 to 28. And then I will explain as quickly as I can the conditions you must satisfy if from now on you are to become your own prophet. Acquaint now thyself with him, that's with God. And be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his words in thy heart. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust, 
and the gold of upper as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. For then shalt thou have thy delight in the Almighty, and shall lift up thy face unto God. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee. And thou shalt pay thy vows. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. What are the conditions that I must satisfy? So that when I speak, the moment I speak, it becomes established. Number one, he said, acquaint thyself with God. Acquaint thyself with God. Develop a close relationship with the Almighty God. If you look at First King chapter 17, verse 1, First King 17, verse 1, the man called Elijah, who spoke a word, and the heavens were shut for more than three years. Look at what he said. Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand. As the Lord lives, the one I spend time with, the one in whose presence I am constantly found, the one with whom I am acquainted. He said, there will be no rain, no dew, unless I call for it. Spend quality time with God. Many of us just want to get up and early in the morning, no time for morning devotion, no fellowship with the Almighty God. We come back late at night, we are tired, we just jump to bed and say, Lord, thank you for today. See you tomorrow. Eh. No, 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 no. It's not, the, it's not those people who can stand up and say, I decree quality time with God. The kind of person who will say to the layman by the beautiful gate, I say unto you in the name of Jesus Christ, arise and walk, must be somebody that people will know had been with Jesus. Quality time with God. That's number one. Number two, he said, acquaint yourself with him. Oh, thank you very much, Lord. The Lord asked me to tell a lady here, pregnant lady, the pregnancy is threatening. He asked me to tell you it's not coming down. Amen. The Lord said there's someone here tonight. He said, uh, This year things have started picking up. He said, By next year you begin to soar. Now he said, Acquaint yourself with him and be at peace. The one who is going to speak and it will be established must be at peace with God. He must be at peace with God. What does that really mean? It means you must have settled all situations between you and God. There must be no area in your life where you are still struggling as to whether I want to obey God or not. Do I want to do His will? Is this one possible to be done? Uh, is the Bible really true? Did he really say this? Oh. 
Joshua in John chapter 10 uh, Joshua chapter 10 verse 12 to 14 Joshua chapter 10 verse 12 to 14 the Bible says Joshua spoke and said son stand where you are moon stand where you are and immediately the sun and the moon obeyed him but what kind of person is Joshua it's a man who has resolved everything he's the one who said in Joshua 24 verse 15 Joshua 24 verse 15 says, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's a settled matter. Do you know many of us still struggle as to whether we should pay our tithe? Oh, many of us say, All right, we'll pay our tithe, but the issue of first fruit, oh my, we don't even want to hear it. I remember some years ago when I first began to teach the payment of first fruit to some of my children somewhere, highly educated people. They came to me and they said, sir, everything you have been teaching is all right. This first fruit business is Old Testament. <laughs> I said, is that so? They said, yes. And we are now in the New Testament. You know, at times you can become so intelligent to become a fool. I said, so we should just stay with the New Testament. Let's forget the Old Testament. They said, exactly. I said, oh, I see. The Lord is my shepherd that shall not want. Is that in the New Testament? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Is that in the New Testament? I shall live, I shall not die, and declare the works of God. Is that in the Gospel according to St. Matthew? <laughs> For you to be at peace with God, you must surrender completely. I said, thy will be done. When you get to that stage when you are absolutely at peace with him, I'm not struggling, anything you want done, that's what I will do, then you begin to qualify to speak a word and get it done. I've told you that when I was young, many a times when I'm playing with my colleagues, my mother will call me and say, son, go and fetch water. You know, we got our water from the village stream. Uh, many of you don't know what that means now. There's water just gushing out of the tap in your room. And I would tell my mother, I'm not going. I'm playing. I'm enjoying myself with my friends. And she will keep quiet. Sooner or later, I will say, Mama, I'm hungry. <laughs> I want food. And mama will say, no problem, food is here. They go and fetch water. Oh, let me eat first and then I will go. No, you go and fetch water. And I will cry and cry. And she won't budge. The same is true of God. You do his will. Anything you ask for, you will get. And then he said, lay up this word in your heart. Study the word. Memorize the word. Some of you can tell us every new news item on CNN for the past six months. But if we ask you what are the memory verses in the Sunday school, last week Sunday, God have mercy. Lay up his word in your heart. Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3, Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3 tells you that blessed is a man who will not walk 
in the counsel of the ungodly, who will not stand in the way of sinners, who will not sit in the seat of the scornful, but is going to meditate on the word of God day and night. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible tells us, the God spoke to Joshua, he said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. Day and night. Many of you spend day and night discussing politics, discussing the situation in the country, instead of meditating on the word of God day and night. And then he said, if iniquity be near you, put it far away from your tabernacle. The one who is going to speak and get it established immediately must have zero tolerance for sin. Iniquity must be put far away from you. Because he says, as I hear in my ears, so will I do unto you. But then he says in Psalm 66 verse 18, Psalm 66 verse 18, David said, if I regard the iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So you are prophesying and God said, I'm not hearing. It is what I hear that I will back up. And you see the link between that and memorizing the word of God. David said in Psalm 119 verse 11, Psalm 119 verse 11, he said, Thy word have I kept in my heart, that I may not sin against thee. You meditate on the word of God day and night, you keep the word in your memory, it becomes difficult to sin. The Watching Redemption Way There is a redeemed Christian Church of God very close to you. Join them for a life-changing experience in worship. same station at this time next week for another wonderful experience as Pastor E. A. Adeboe exposes the deep mysteries in the Word of God. The Lord is going to surprise someone here tonight. Pastor E. A. Adeboe and other men of God every first Friday of the month as they lead multitudes of worshippers to the presence of God in the monthly Holy Ghost service at the Redemption Camp, kilometer 46, Lagos Express Expressway from 6.30 p.m. to 